Well, it's been 40 years of Games Workshop's flagship war game. I'd say it's about time to do a video on Warhammer the Old World. Have a listen to what I want to see in it. Hey there guys, it's Richard from Ghost Hunter Gaming and as you pro and now that we are in the year of 2023, we all know that it's going to be a big one. There's a whole bunch of games there's a whole bunch of games coming out. However, for us over in that lovely little community of plastic toy soldiers and lore that's and Lord is so deep that it actually managed to manages to make a things such as Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings appear shallow in comparison. We've got at the very least one big launch coming up this year, which with all the theories that are currently buzzing about, we'll, we'll suggest add Warhammer 40,000 10th edition. However, there is also something special about this year, as that this year represents 40 years since Games Workshop first released the tabletop miniatures game that basically brought them out of just making stuff for Dungeons and & Dragons, and that was Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Now, recently... Now, for those of you who don't know the ever so tragic tale of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, it was considered by many to be one of the greatest war games ever ever devised by man. It was basically a game where you collected an army of small all miniature soldiers of varying different races and factions, ranging from a gallant human empire to barbaric at to barbaric tribes of orcs, to conniving, well, to conniving in war bands of rat people, to well, spiky dudes in armor that worship god odds based around stuff such as blood, disease, sex, and mind fucks. And it was fantastic for the longest time. Everyone was happy. It was so popular that it was so popular that a few years later they even released a sci-fi version, and of I'd say really I'd say really big popularity. But we're talking about fantasy. The game went on for me any edition for many years, lasting a full eight editions in in the time frame of. 1973 all the way up to 2015 where due to uh, where due to various reasons games workshop brought about the end of the warhammer fantasy setting through an event known as the end times a much maligned series of books that that basically told the story of how how the skaven killed a whole bunch of people made the moon go boom boom allied with the four allied with the remaining forces of chaos, and basically helped to destroy the entire world. And then they brought us Age of Sigma, which was a system that was much maligned for, well, that was much maligned for its initial existence, but now has actually started to gain some popularity now that they've actually, now that people have actually noticed that they're doing interesting shit with it. But, we heard a few years, but we heard a few years ago that Warhammer Fantasy Battles was going to be making a return in the form of Warhammer the Old World which by the which by the sounds of everything that has been said about it appears to be a appears to be for Warhammer Age of Sigma what Warhammer the Horus Heresy is for Warhammer 40,000 which is a prequel now Games Workshop recently released an article on their community website for the first time in a few months, basically highlighting some more news about Warhammer the Old World. 
in which they basically said that what they're going to be doing for this game is they're going to be going back through is that they've been looking back through all the past editions of Warhammer Fantasy from 3rd edition up until 8th edition. The only reason they've not done the first two editions is because those two were more like RPGs that had some wargaming elements rather than full-on war games. But they looked back at all those editions that were actual full-on war game and took and they're taking the best bits from all those editions and mashing them together with a bunch of new stuff, which is actually quite exciting. They also set, they also announced with that with this game, they're also bringing back several of the factions that had been wiped out, that had been wiped out during the end times and did not make a return in Age of Sigma, such as the Tomb Kings and the Bretonians, aka Warhammer French people. Well, that's kind of well, that's kind of under the meme way of putting it. Basically, knights, well, Arthurian type knights with French with with really poncy names. But anyway, and everyone is happy. However, I have also been hearing a lot of people basically saying about what they want from the release of Warhammer: The Old World, and I figured I'd chime in as well. You know. Give my two cents. And what better place to start than with the main main re than with the main reason for that well, with one of the main things that you need for a successful game, which is rules. Apparently one one of the big problems that Warhammer Fantasy had when it what well when it was getting going well, when it was reaching the end of its lifespan, and it was something that for a while Warhammer 40,000 also struggled with as well, was there was a lot of ru- there was a, there were a lot of rules that um, let's just say didn't exactly make didn't exactly make the game easy to grasp. Now with Warhammer 40,000, a lot of that got fixed. However, with Warhammer Fantasy, well, they basically just fixed it by making the setting go boom. But, hopefully, now that Games Workshop have a better grasp on how to make an engaging rule set, they might be able to make a rule set for Warhammer Fantasy that is easy for new player that is easy for players who are interested in the setting, but don't have the same, you know, the same commitment to war games as some of the pre-established players already well, as some of the pre-existing players already have, they can get into the they can get into the setting as well, which I get the feeling, uh, which I get the feeling, quite a few people are going to get into, especially considering a the Vermintide games and Total War Warhammer games exist, and two, there's going to be a whole bunch there's going to be a whole bunch of shiny new models. So of course, people are going to jump in. Speaking of Total War Warhammer, they basically Games Workshop have also said that Old World and Total War Warhammer 3 are gonna have a sort of interesting connection. Basically, in that some of the stuff that was designed for Warhammer, t- well, Total War Warhammer 3 is also being carried over into Warhammer the Old World, which is which we some of which we know about so far, uh, such as the fact that Kiz. Well, Kislev and Grand Cathay, two settings that in the get then the original run of fantasy only got brief mentions, are now actually getting full armies, which is neat because it opens up a lot because it opens up a lot more fat actions for people who probably don't like the initial offerings. They can probably find something in any of these extra factions that are being added in that could appeal to them. Which would be especially interesting if some of the community cryouts, such as Ind and Nippon, also get added in as well. Those two settings would be nice as hell. I mean, Warhammer, Fa- Warhammer Japan and Warhammer India. So, yeah, go nuts. Um, next thing I want. Next thing I want to go over, and this is something that's a little bit more, or, well, 
that's a little bit it closer is also I would kind of like Games Workshop to clarify something with well, well to clarify something a bit especially with some of the armies that did make the transition over from f Fantasy to Age of Sigma such as Seraphon and Skaven now recently I have actually started work on the moderate undertaking of starting a Skaven force and there's a lot of work that goes into a Skaven force any other Skaven player can tell can back me up on that especially when it comes to painting oh boy oh boy the painting um, so as you can so as you can imagine it's been making me quite um, well quite thinking well thinking quite a bit on what army I actually want to I actually want to do for or old world when it comes out and also the and also I want to know the possibility on despite the fact that they've said that square bases will be making a return if if we already have armies that appear in Age of Sigma but also appear in fancy battles such as the Skaven and also the Seraphon, aka the Lizard Men. Can we still use our AOS forces in Well, can we still use our Age of Sigma models for Old World, provided that they actually have rules in Old World, or would we or if or would all the Skaven players who picked up Skaven in Age of Sigma have to let out moans and cries of ah as they have to buy and paint as they have to buy, build and paint their massive hordes of clan rats all over again? For the sake of my sanity, I hope we can carry o over. Another thing that I also another thing that would also be nice to see is a return of the old battalions. Now, something that Games Workshop has been doing in recent years for both 40k and Age of Sigma is they've been releasing these, as they've been releasing box sets that have previously been known as dark collecting sets. Now for, for now for 40k they're called Vanguard sets, and for Age of Sigma they are called Vanguards. These usually contain a small start a small styling force for a particular for a particular army and they usually come at a pretty nice discount like for, like for example recently i got like for example for my skaven i got the skaven vanguard set a while back which came with a gray seer 20 clan rats and three storm fiends which came which honestly if i bought all that stuff separately it probably would have cost a lot more it also would have been it would have also been like pulling teeth to get them, especially considering that the Storm Fiends are currently about as easy to get as evidence of the Tooth Fairy. Um, finally, but yeah, however, the old battalions from back in the day, they were more designed as a sort of reinforcement, a reinforcement box, like something that you get to add on to an army that you've already got. I mean, obviously the Vanguard uh, sets work more or less the same, but it would still be nice to have that sort of nostalgic feel that many of us used to have back in the old days of Warhammer Fantasy, where we could just get a box set, not for the purpose of start, well, not just for the purpose of starting an army, but also for the purpose of reinforcing one. Moving on to another set, or to another other point of conjecture, which Games Workshop hasn't yet fully clarified on, is um, a lot of people, when they're talking about Old World, are basically hinting that it's going to be a Forge World project. What I actually want to know is if, is, um, especially since a lot of the connections to Horus Heresy are being made, is it going to be a case of the... Of, it's going to be like first edition Horus Heresy, where it was exclusive to Forge World. The only way you could get the stuff for it is through Forge World, or is it going to be a similar case to the current edition of Horus Heresy, where 
you can get where a lot more of the stuff is on get where mo well where the bulk of the stuff is available on games workshops website but there's some more specialist stuff f on forge world that you can get especially since forge world has a habit of being more expensive than games workshop and sometimes and with some of the miniatures the price kind of doesn't seem worth it especially since there's quite a few of the resin models that they've got there that are not as well detailed as some of the plastic offerings that games workshop up puts out on their on their main website nowadays so it would be nice to know if we ha it would be nice to know if we could do if it's a case of say say um, someone wanted to start Tomb Kings, they could get the bulk of their Tomb Kings force on Games Workshop's website, but if they wanted to get a character like, say, Cetra the Imperishable, or Kemri, no, not Kemri, uh, it'll come back to me. Uh, someone can correct me in the comments. It's um, one of the Queen characters. But if, you, but if they want to get her, they can get her through Forge World. I feel that would be a better way to do it. Basically, give us the generic characters on Games Workshop on the main website, and and give us the named characters on Forge World. So at least that way, it's you still got the ease of access, but you also don't have all these named characters kind of bloating up the website. Especially since at the end of the day, the named characters aren't as important. Well. They're important, but they aren't as important as, well, having any characters. Finally, and this is a very, very minor one. Yeah, going back yeah, going back from a major point to a minor point, but this is something that I honestly want to see. I want to see a return to the old style of boxes for the models. Now, to explain what I mean, current... Nowadays, when you go to a Games Workshop store and you buy a box of models, like, say, a box of Space Marine Intercessors for 140000 the box will usually show you a photo of the models, fully built and painted, made to look like they're in the middle of a scene. That is nice and all, but something that stood out to me a lot more back in the day were... The old box, some of the old boxes for Warhammer Fantasy, they didn't have photos of the models on the box. They had artwork, which truly showed off the units inside much better. It also didn't. It also, it was also a bit more friendly to newer players who weren't as confident in their painting because when you look at the work of the heavy metal team on the main boxes, it's kind of easy to get. It's kind of easy to think. Uh, probably shouldn't bother because I can't get to that standard but with the classic but with the classic artwork that they had on the fantasy boxes it didn't really matter because it was essentially a painting on the box plus also it kind of looks nicer you can you can show a lot more in there like you can actually show the units in the middle of a battle giving the player an idea on how that unit would be fighting like for example, you could have something like a new box for rat ogres, sho showing a rat ogre picking up an empire soldier, uh, looking like he's about to slam him on the ground. That would be cool, and I that that would be something cool to see on a box. But I get the feeling it'll probably be a case of they'll still of they'll still but still do the model showcase on the box because, well, it's kind. It's kind of easier that it's kind of easier to do that than to commission a piece of artwork for the box. But saying that, they've got a, they've had a lot of artwork in the um, in the articles they've been doing for Old World so far, so they've got plenty to pick, pick from. And with that, that's gonna be my that's gonna be the end of my little video about what I want to see from Warhammer: The Old World. Uh, let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you guys would like to see. And if you liked what you saw, then please be sure to leave a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I will try to be putting out more content this year, I swear. 
Anyway, this has been Richard from Ghost Hunter Gaming. Have a pleasant day. Yeah.